Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for his church in the air, and then with his church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption everyone to another LHB last days update with Chris and Lewis and we are have we have some special guests again you know them well we have Addy Miller from discerning the drift and Samantha Otters from blessed assurance both on our channel and uh, we welcome any new viewers and if you like our content please go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell that way every time we upload a video you guys are notified don't forget to go over to our rumble channel and sign up over there as well Okay, we're getting we're getting more and more videos transferred over there daily. Okay, um, today we're going to be talking about mid acts and it, is mid acts compatible with the Bible? And um, before we do that, I want everybody to say hello to the LHB family, uh, starting with Sister Addy. Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today, and we do pray that this will be a um, a blessing to everyone that's tuning in today. And we pray that it is something that you can use to go forward and be discerning. Amen. Sam? Hi, LHB family. I hope you're all having a good day and that we all learn a lot about this really weird teaching. Amen. And and Brother Lewis? I can say hi to the LHB family and anyone watching this video. Uh, and I'll be learning a lot today because this is something new also for me. Amen. You, you and me both, brother. Uh, you know, I just recently over this last year, you know, we've encountered this and it's just mind blowing how it kind of flies under the radar. Um, so, uh, you know, for the viewers and for us, um, Sister Addie, OK, who's who has more information on this than we do, will go ahead and give you the outline of the mid acts teaching and, you know, what they kind of believe and why. And then we'll go into why it's not compatible with the Bible. So take it away whenever you're ready, Addie. All right, good. Well, um, uh, I um, this has been around for decades, but I really only became aware of it about five years ago. So I kind of started putting some, some, uh, some notes together that just some questions, I had red flags. Uh, so in my uh, notes, I will read you some of the following information that I found. What I do is I find a red flag and then I go backwards in time and I find the source of that red flag. And here we are today. Now, um, mid acts is also called ultra dispensationalism or hyper dispensationalism. It's also called Bullingerism. And the reason why it's called Bullingerism, and those are the more what I would call the ultra hyper, hyper, hyper dispensationalist, is because it's named after a gentleman who lived from 1837 to 1913. And he was actually, as far as I can tell from my research, he was the very first person to begin promoting mid acts theology. And uh, he only believed, he only believed that he believed that only Paul's prison epistles are to the body of Christ. So he even made it much more narrow than the mid-acts or the, the, the uh, ultras of today. Wow. There, yeah. So um, there was also following him, there was uh, other gentlemen that there was a J.C. O'Hare. He lived from 1876 to 1958. C.R. Stam, S-T-A-M, 1908 to 2003. Charles Baker, 1905-1994, Paul Sadler, 1948 to 2016, and this one you may have, you may know, Les Feldick. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Les Feldick is a mid-act ultra-hyper-dispensationalist, so, and he's still alive today. They were all involved in, here's, here's the clincher with mid-act. They believe so much of what classic dispensationalists believe, like what you said, Chris, that's how they fly under the radar because they believe a lot of the same things that we believe. They believe in the rapture. Uh, they believe in the thousand year millennial reign. They believe in uh, uh, the security of the believer and um, just a plethora of other things. You know, uh, 
the, the inspiration and inerrancy of the Bible, the closed canon of scripture, the final authority of the Bible for our faith and practice, the Trinity, the deity of Christ, the virgin birth. That's how they could fly under the radar. Because a lot of times I have heard people say, I didn't realize I was under mid-Acts teaching until much later. Right. Picking up on things that they were saying. And I said, oh, wait, stop. That doesn't make sense. Like what Sam was saying earlier, you know, so that's how they were able to fly under the radar. And it's been around for a long time. But in my opinion, it has made a resurgence right. in the last few decades. You know, that mm -hmm. awesome explanation. That's a good intro for this. Um, what caught my attention about uh, the Mid-Axe folks is they're, they, it's almost like they have Paul as our mediator between us and Jesus. You know, um, you know, just yesterday I, I saw, you know, and I showed it to you guys, a prayer request that says, you know, the Christians go to Paul to go to Jesus or something like that. Follow, follow Paul to follow Jesus. And I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, number, number one, the God, it's not Paul's gospel. It's not Peter's gospel. It's the gospel of God. And if we're talking about, you know, because they like to promote this idea that there's different gospels out there. Now, Sam, when you, you got to have a red flag there when people start saying there's different gospels, right? Yeah, I mean, it's reminding me, um, actually, this whole thing, it was kind of reminding me about the beginning of uh, Mormonism because, uh, I mean, they literally called their Bible like a New Testament of Jesus Christ. They call it right. something new. But I was like, it seems like these people are kind of deifying Paul the way that like the Mormons deify Joseph Smith. Like right. he's the one who brought the gospel, like the true gospel to us. And I was like, that's that's really weird. And I was like, I thought we were called Christians, not Paulians last time I right. checked. Amen. <laughs> we follow Paul. I mean, Paul does say in the scripture, imitate me as I imitate Christ, but he's not right. saying like fault like I am your way to Jesus. Right. No, he's, he's basically saying, saying he's just basically saying, just like I have my faith in Christ, you do the same thing. Imitate me. Have your faith in Christ. That's what that is. Yes. <laughs> That's what he's saying. <laughs> and so yeah, there's not more than one gospel. I mean Paul, which I find it funny that they're like Paul is the one who's teaching this other gospel because like it was literally paul who wrote if an angel for heaven or anyone else comes to you with a different gospel than what i or any of the other apostles have preached mark and avoid them it is not of god <laughs> hey matter it goes deeper than that it says let them be accursed that's yeah. serious yeah. that's that's damnation <laughs> you know so it's like i don't know how the put that verse in with their own teaching because paul is <laughs> basically disproving their own right. teaching you know um <laughs> brother lewis you know when they say there's different gospels out there like for instance we had this talk many times you and i over the over the years when people say the gospel of the kingdom is different than the gospel of salvation and i kindly remind people they're one and the same i remember i learned this from dave hunt years ago um the gospel of the king it's kind of like saying the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of god they're used interchangeably it's the same kingdom OK, so you, I say to them, who can enter into the kingdom? Are there going to be unbelievers in the kingdom? No. OK, then who's the kingdom for? Believers. OK, so how do you become a believer? <laughs> you know, so it's the same gospel um, and they try to divide it there. But you go back to Genesis uh, chapter three, uh, the fall of man. And right there is the very first presentation of the gospel when God promises a deliverer that would crush the head of the serpent. It, it's just very crystal clear all the way from back then. What do you got to say, Louis? Well, First <clears throat> uh, Corinthians fourteen thirty three it says, "For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints." So when we say, "Well, this is what Paul wrote," but it's actually like you, you were saying, God is telling us, "I will not write anything that will confuse you." Okay. Everything that I write is for your understanding. You know, if somebody loves you, they wouldn't confuse you in the, in the teachings. And Amen. then we, we, we go back to, to, to Genesis, and that's where the gospel started. That's where grace started. You that's know, right. For, for all of us. And, <clears throat> yes, they believe that 
Paul was the first saved Christian that right. no one was saved before that. Um, I also read uh, the name, and I forgot his first name of Darby. Uh, they talk about the Schofield Bible also is uh, is for for mid acts and this these people are are so confused. That it, it it goes beyond some of the other people that are confused. They are really really confused when they talk about different gospel. There's only it's one body, one spirit, one God. Right, and um, you know, <laughs> it well it it goes back to um, rightly dividing uh, who's in the church, right, and what is the church. A lot of people they tend to say, okay, the church started at, at Pentecost. They say it started with Paul, but whatever. Uh, the church started at Pentecost. Well, yet technically, that's when it arrived on earth. You know, that's when Christ started to build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But it's nothing for him to reach to the saints of the past, the saints in the future, and put them in this church. Um, and th that's the problem. A lot of people kind of like say uh, certain people are in heaven right now outside of the body of Christ. Now, that's dangerous. Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. So they have a, a problem with, with the scriptures there. Now, I, I, I look at the, 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 the church as the body of Christ. Now, the body of Christ has different body parts. This, they think of the body of Christ as the church, Old Testament saints, the hands or the feet, you know, tribulation saints, the eyes or whatever. And the church, the regular, right now, present-day church age saints, we're, you know, we're doing something, we're a body part, um, but we're all in the same body of Christ, right? That's why uh, the the three phases of the first resurrection is called the first resurrection. I believe that um, some of the Old Testament saints already have their glorified bodies, for instance. In Matthew chapter 27, when Christ came out of the graves, what happened? Many bodies of the saints came out with him. It didn't say they died again. No, these were the saints that were in Abraham's bosom that came out with him. And then they went up with him, okay? And they labored first. They were the first batch of saints from Genesis on. And we are laboring second. So we're going to be caught up at the rapture and the resurrection. And then who labors last? The tribulation saints. And they will be resurrected at the second coming. But here's the thing. It's all called the first resurrection. So I said all that to say this. There's no different gospel and no different way of salvation, is there, Addie? No, there isn't. And, uh, and yeah, and Brother Lewis, when you said, they said that, uh, they say that Paul was the first saved. They're, they they actually go a little further than that and say that he, Paul was the first person saved by grace. Mm. They actually mm. say that. And, you know, all, I mean, we know those of us who have allowed the Holy Spirit to teach us through God's word, not what we want it to say, but what God wants it to say. We know that grace runs through the whole Bible. Amen. And it, it, it started in Genesis right after the fall. And, and there was there's pictures of Jesus throughout that. You know, Amen. Like just the, the, the sacrifice of the lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, you know, and you could go on and on. The Ark of the Covenant. You could talk about all of these types and shadows of Jesus Christ that have been pictured throughout the Bible. It didn't start, the grace did not begin um, in the New Testament. It started right. in the Old Testament. You know, God is a God of mercy and grace. That's just what he Amen. is. So let me go through, I'm going to just shoot out some things that they believe, and then y'all just Jump in there when if you you have a refutation because I know you will. Okay, so this is this is some of the things that they believe. One of the ones was Paul was the the, the first person to be saved by grace, and that was on the road to Damascus, Acts chapter nine. And then some mid Acts people believe that it's actually Acts chapter thirteen where Paul starts his missionary journey. So there's a you know mid Acts. I have, I have a question. I have a question. Um, if Paul is the first one to get saved by grace. Is that what they say? That's, That's what, what you just said. Okay. Okay. Say, okay. Yeah. So, so when it says Noah found grace in the sight of God, it, it go. wasn't really it, it wasn't really grace that he found. It must have been something else. It must have been a typo. Right. <laughs> but look, just like in other, like in 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 Catholicism, you have cafeteria Catholics. In Calvinism, you have cafeteria Calvinists. 
You have the same thing in mid-acts. You have mid-acts people who will say, oh, uh, I believe that, but I don't believe this. Mm. Or I believe this, but I don't agree with that. So you have like kind of a, a, a mush, a hodgepodge, you know, a soup of all kinds of different beliefs. So don't be surprised if you run into a mid ax person that says, oh, no, I don't believe that. They right. have okay, so here we go. All right. Some of the New Testament books are not written to the present day church. They are only for the Jewish Christians. Oh. That were the, the ones that were saved before Paul <coughs> converted. Wow. So basically, so, they, so that's where they make the first division? There was a, a different gospel for the Jews, basically? They believe, yes, they believe that, yes, yes. The, the gospel for the Jews from Peter is different from the gospel of, of, of uh, uh, the Gentiles from Paul. They believe that up until Acts chapter um, chapter 9 or 13, whichever one you want to believe, that's all Old Testament. That the apostles were considered Old Testament, not New Testament. Ah, gotcha. All so, right. So, so well, let me ask you this, because I, I know they also believe that um, Jesus taught a different gospel yes. than Paul as well, that he taught a gospel apart from the cross, right? Like, you know. But yeah. in, in uh, John chapter 2, verses 19 to 22, Jesus speaking, he says this, Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. That sounds like the, the death, burial, and resurrection to me right there. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was the, this temple and building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body, okay? When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. So when, to say that, you know, Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 teaches the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ is different from what Jesus just said here. That's a, that's a straight up a lie, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, yeah, and they actually say that Peter preached Jesus' gospel while Jesus was here on the earth. Okay? Like they, they're really basically saying without saying that Jesus gave Peter and Paul two different gospels because they're saying that while Jesus was here in his in in his in his uh, incarnate state, he gave Peter a gospel for the Jews. Then, when he ascended five to seven years later, when Paul met him on the road to Damascus, he gave Paul a different gospel to give to the Gentiles. So, who are they blaspheming? Right, and 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 what happened to the you know scripture that says God is no respecter of persons? Like he he's not going to give one way of. You remember when Jesus prayed to the Father, if there be any way take this cup from me. Obviously the cup wasn't taken from him because there is no other way apart from Jesus and his sacrifice. So that is such blasphemy to, to teach. And it's real serious. And that's why we're addressing this. I mean, Sam, listening to what Addie's saying here, I got a little confused. And like Brother Lewis I mean, said, God is not the author of confusion. I'm, I'm confused because uh, was it not Peter who led the first Gentile to Christ? If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Cornelius, yeah, yeah, yeah. Act correctly, he goes to a Roman's house. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. And like, and then Peter was like, "Oh, the gospel isn't just for the Jews; it's also for the Gentiles." Well, hold so, on, Sam. Also, remember Peter's dream about the unclean yes. animals, you know? And he's like, "No, Lord, I've never eaten any of this. This is dirty." No. And God says, "Don't call dirty what I've made clean." Speaking of the Gentiles as well. Yes. And so I don't know how they reason that because <laughs> would they say that that guy really wasn't saved because Peter was the one who taught him? I, I'm i just really confused. <laughs> which yeah, is not again, the gospel. And again, like Lewis, like Lewis rightly said, God is not the author of confusion. Brother Lewis, okay, I was listening to Sister Addie. I'm following her. But it's it's all that information that they're sitting there dividing and twisting and all that. That's the confusion, isn't it? It is, because what she was saying, uh, you can find it in Galatians 2, 7. It says, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, and the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, they use that. And it's not. It's, uh, 
Paul is saying, I am, I am the apostle to the Gentiles, and Peter and is the one to the Jews in, in Jerusalem. And, and this is one of the, uh, the things that the Catholic Church likes to tell people. See, it's like Peter, you know, he, he, he's our pope uh, and, and our leader, but Peter never left Jerusalem. He never went to Rome. Uh, there was never, even historical that is, uh, in history, that, that's not recorded that Peter did this. So he was in, in, with, uh, with Jesus' brother. He was in charge of the council in Jerusalem. And it wasn't two different Gospels, because in Second Peter 3.15, Peter says, An account, <clears throat> an account of the, the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. And also all his epistles speaking in them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they are unlearned and unstable rest, they do also the other scriptures until their own destruction. What he's saying is, is it's not it, Paul. Peter's saying what Paul has written is the same thing that we have all written, and it's the same gospel. And if it's hard to understood, it's for those that are unlearned and unstable, and they do this with the scriptures. So they're not doing this with the uh, New Testament. They're also doing this with the Old Testament. So it, it, it's, it's not hard to understand for those who uh, the uh, Holy Spirit in, uh, dwells in. We have a teacher, and we also have in LHB teachers. Uh, you know, we learn from, I have learned from Chris, from Maddie, uh, from Sam. We, we, we learn from each other also, but the main teacher here is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well said, brother. And you know, speaking of the, there being a dis different gospel, uh, Sister Addie, uh, you know, like, for instance, they say the Old Testament saints were saved, I guess, by through some kind of works or whatever, keeping the law, whatever the deal. Law. Yeah, the and, law. The law and works. And works. That's so, how they differentiate it, yes. So then how would they reconcile Isaiah 53? Because that's a detailed description of what Christ would do to pay for the sins of the world. Like the Old Testament saints, they look forward to the coming of the Messiah, just like we look backwards to the Messiah that came. Right, it's still through the same Messiah. There's no different messiahs, different gospels, different ways of salvation. Salvation for for the Jews is through this way, but the Gentiles is this way. You know. Uh, so what about the people that fail to keep the law and they end up in hell? And now here comes Christ with a a better gospel. But oh, so sorry that you're in hell. Uh, you know, I could have gave you the same gospel, but I'm so sorry. You know, you didn't keep the law. But but Lord, these guys don't have to keep the law. Yeah, I know, but I like them better than you. So. Uh, <laughs> it's so confusing, Sister Addie. But go ahead, Sister Addie, continue with your awesome expose on this. Well, okay, so let me give you a little bit more tidbits. Um, let's see, the other 12 apostles are not part of the body of Christ. Wow. They're, they, yeah. They're, um, this is not held by all mid acts, okay? So remember that when if you're ever talking to a mid acts person. The church, which is the body of Christ, was the mystery okay they get they're hung up on this mystery that paul received okay paul was enlightened to was was illuminated by they, they were really hung up on that uh the writings of the other apostles other than paul's their works and doctrine are not for the church today wow baptism wow. in water you know baptism believers baptism not to be saved but because you are saved Right. Was a Jewish ceremonial um, uh, ordinance only, not to be practiced today. The Holy Spirit's baptism at salvation by grace, according to Mid Acts, is the only baptism that you should uh, participate in. Wow. So they, I like how they, they're, they're, they're mixing the truth with yes. something because it is true that the, the you, you get baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's the true baptism. Right. The, the water is only an outward showing of what happens inside. So, you know, just like Satan to mix some of the truth, like, you know, what, during the temptations of Christ in the wilderness, Satan says, oh, cast yourself from off of this temple. And, you know, uh, the Lord will send his angels to bury, bury you up lest you dash your feet against a stone. That is true. That was true scripture. But he twisted it in order to tempt Jesus. Right now, you know, speaking of. Uh, the apostles not being part of the body of Christ or the in the Old Testament or a different group. Well, we have a problem again in Revelation chapter 21, uh, verses 12 to 14. Speaking of the heavenly city, <laughs> you were about to read that? 
I was looking for it. I was like, I know it's somewhere in Revelation. I just couldn't find it. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, Sam, go ahead. When you go to Revelation chapter 21 and read verses 12 to 14, then we'll talk about it. 12 to 14, okay. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the twelve, uh, and I can't read. <laughs> and at the twelve <laughs> angels at the gates, and names written, there, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. <laughs> So there you go. You have both the um, the uh, the twelve tribes of Israel and the name and the twelve apostles in the same place, and that that city when coming down, uh, uh, John says, you know, he saw the heavenly city coming down from heaven like a bride adorned for her husband. Again, why are their names there if they're a separate group of people, uh, Brother Lewis? Uh, it's like you know you talk about confusion when uh at the temptation of Christ uh and then we can go back to um did God not say you know trying to confuse Eve which he did um and anything that has to do with confusion comes from Satan it Amen. does not come from God it is that simple and when you have uh like uh, sister Eddie said that you know these people they all believe different things okay they argue with each other so this is more confusion adding to their confusion. So this is not from God. This is not from the Holy Spirit. The word is, is simple because God wants us to understand it. Uh, and and it, it's, it's, it's amazing that people would just create different doctrines out of just one verse here and one verse there. Well, you know, Sister Addy, um <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, different Gospels again, um, what, okay, what is Satan's end goal here? Because we know he's our enemy, okay? But what what benefit does he get out of uh, promoting these different gospels? I mean, they're not really saying anything bad. I mean, you know, they're, they're still promoting the Bible, right? Like, what what does he get out of this? Well, it's a it's a diversionary tactic. If you get people to believe this, right? What Satan is great about that, you know, he'll take a lot of truth and mix in just enough arsenic to kill you and send you to hell. So it's a diversionary tactic, which is one of the, 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 one, the, one of the, the, the one things that he uses the most, I find, especially within Christendom. So if you get people to believe a false gospel that they think is a true gospel, they never will come to know the genuine gospel. Amen. So, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's all a, a, a tactic and a ploy. And it's so easily done because of what you said at the very beginning, Chris, they are flying under the radar. There are so many people that are starting to realize that they were being, they were under the leadership of mid-act people. And they're just finding out this out now because right. a lot of what they believe lines up with classic dispensationalism. So there's the deception. That's a, that's a further layer of deception. All right. So this is what I want you to do, Sister Addie. Since we're, I mean, time has flown. This is amazing. Oh. I want you to go ahead. All right. And just kind of, <laughs> I know when you're having fun, right? I want you to go ahead and just, uh, you know, for those who are listening, just kind of go over real quick again, why this teaching is dangerous. I know you just hit on, you know, a false gospel that'll lead somebody to hell, but even for Christians that are, are brand new Christians and they fall into this, why is this so dangerous? Well, because it, first of all, it's deceptive because it leads you away from the biblical truth, from the true gospel. And if you search the scriptures like you all have all shared here today from God's word, you will see that there's only one gospel and it began in Genesis. That's where it began. And it did not begin in Acts 9 or 13. It began in Genesis all the way through the, the, um, the New Testament church of today the continuing age of grace church of today has one gospel and if you have somebody telling you that there are two or three or four gospels it is exactly what sam was saying at the beginning of our program that it is a different gospel and then i think i gave evidence that they are even preaching a different jesus because if the earthly jesus the incarnate jesus 
uh, gave Peter one gospel and then the ascended, resurrected Jesus who appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus gave him another gospel. Aren't they teaching a counterfeit Jesus? That's Jesus right. I have a split personality. That's okay. right. Amen. Like divisive. And, he, and like, like Brother Lewis said, he is not the author of confusion. So I would say to all people who are just finding out about Mid-Acts or new believers, I would say you need to get into scriptures and you need to take God's word for what it says. Don't look at what man tells you. Get in the Bible and start reading it. You may, you know, it took me a long time to read through the, the, the whole Bible when, as a brand new believer. But I understood a lot of it. And then I got, as I grew in Christ, I got more learned as the Holy Spirit helped me to decipher things and to understand things. So I would say that for people that are mid-acts or that, that are concerned about mid-acts or they're new believers that don't want to get caught up in mid-acts, one of the best things that you can do, guys, and this is for uh, people who are not even Christians. They may be being drawn by the Holy Spirit and they have a desire New, new Christians and even Christians that are, have been walking with the Lord for decades. It's, it's very important for us to understand the enemy. Okay, some of the best, I hate to bring in war, but some of the best generals that have led in the war, in battles and war, they said one of the best things you can know is know how your enemy works. Know how your enemy thinks. What are his tactics? So you have to understand who God is, but you also have to understand who Satan is as well. You have to understand who the true biblical Jesus is and who the counterfeit Jesus is are, because there's multiples of them out here all around. It's very important to understand that you have to understand, for you to understand the counterfeit, you have to first know the genuine. Amen, amen. Number one, number one you've got to know God, who he is, his attributes, who he is not, is very important. Who Jesus is, who he is not as well. You know, little things like Jesus didn't resurrect just spiritually. He resurrected physically. That's you right. Know that. That's important to everyone. So get in the word. Start learning. Don't give up. Be persistent because God blesses you if you are. Just keep pressing on. And you will know the genuine so that you can pick up on the counterfeit. And you know what? I say amen to that. And, um, you know, Sam, the Bible says if you seek the Lord with all your heart, you'll find. So if you're seeking for the truth, God is going to make sure he finds a way to get that truth to you. Right, Sammy? Yes. He's going to either bring, you know, a person in your path who will help teach you or he will lead you to passages of scripture that will help you. Um, he's not going to lead you down a false way. If you are earnestly seeking God and you want to know him, he's not going to tell you a lie. God can't lie. So he's not, he doesn't want to fool you. He's not, he's not, you know, he's not playing with you. <laughs> he wants to help right. you. He wants to show you the truth. And a good example of that, what you're saying is remember the Ethiopian that was, mm -hmm. he wasn't saved at the point, but he was searching for the truth. Amen. And, and what did the Lord do? Send what? Philip? Was it Philip? Send Philip yeah, his so, way, yeah. you know, uh, and, and say, hey, uh, go ahead and explain to this gentleman uh, what he's looking at, because he couldn't understand it as yet. He didn't have the Holy Spirit. But when Philip got there and he explained it, the the uh, Ethiopian was like, listen, let, let's find a body of water real quick. Uh, I, I, I have believed and now I want to get baptized. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing how his eyes of understanding and his ears of understanding were open the second he believed what Philip was explaining to him about Jesus Christ. I mean, that happened to me too, uh, Brother Lewis, and all of you, I know. I remember I tried to read the Bible uh, as a Catholic uh, one time, I, one time, literally one time, mm -hmm. I, and I understood a couple of things only. I understood in the beginning. <laughs> Everything else was was just like physics to me. I was like looking at like hieroglyphics. I couldn't under I'm like what what is this? You know, I didn't even understand like well wait a minute how did Cain find his wife if there's only Cain and Abel? I didn't understand how to decipher in the process of time. You know, Adam and Eve had many children and one of their you know I didn't understand any of that. But when I got saved, it was like the floodgates were opened. I would 
It's like, look, when you have the author of the Bible living inside of you, uh, he'll explain stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, Brother Lewis, Brother Lewis, okay. Uh, there are pe- we're going to give the, the, the true gospel here, the only one, right? We're not going to give a gospel of works, a gospel of, you know, you got to please God. You got to repent for all, from all your sins, okay, which is another deception, by the way. Okay, um, what is the gospel that saves, the simple gospel? Well, you know, Ephesians 2, 6 says that you're saved by grace and not by works. And the grace came through the um, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And like you said, we don't repent from our sins. We repent from uh, not obeying God's command, and we go to him. And like you quoted um, in John 14, 6, uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's you have to go to Jesus Christ, and you have to open uh, your heart to him and truly understand that you need a Savior to pay for your sin, and he already has done that. God has done everything for us. All we do need to do is accept the gift that he has given us. And the Bible says, you know, you will be saved. It's simple. It's a simple gospel, one gospel um, from the Genesis to uh, Revelation. No one else's gospel but God. Amen, brother. And, you know, uh, like Sister Addy mentioned as well, um, grace has always been here. Okay, guys, grace has always been here. If it wasn't for grace, Adam and Eve would have dropped dead the second they even thought about sinning because sin starts in the, the mind first. The body is the last thing to react. You got to think about robbing a bank before you actually go ahead and do it, right? So Eve already sinned in her mind, and her body just carried out the, the sin that she was going to do, and so did Adam, right? They had options. They chose poorly, but they had options. Um, but this didn't catch God off guard. It, it, you know, he, he had Jesus ready from the foundations of the world. This is before uh, angels were created or humans were created. He knew what would happen. He knew that the gift of free will will come with some, you know, not so pleasant uh, choices. He knew this, and he had a, he already had a plan in motion to deal with it. You know, uh, Satan didn't see it coming, all right, uh, and none of us saw it coming, but God knew. And so what Brother Lewis just said about the simple gospel, all you have to look, look, Jesus did the hard part. He did the hard part. Okay. He bore the sins of every single human that would ever exist. Okay. From Genghis Khan to Hitler, you know, all all the, the Castro, all the wicked guys throughout history, they had the same option to be saved, just like you and I. And, um, a, a, a lot of the times they, chose poorly and, and unfortunately they are right now waiting for the lake of fire in, in Hades and that's that's uh that's sad and we don't want that for you guys that may be on the fence about Jesus. Okay, so again I want to thank the panel for being here. Uh we're gonna have to do a, another program on this, but I know next week we're gonna be hitting the seven mountain uh mandate. Uh because uh sister Lesty wanted to go ahead and do that. And I'm like, you know what? This is her first program, and we got to do this for her. And um, that's yeah. another another topic that's just mind blowing, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, um, uh, can I count you guys in, or uh, yeah. you guys going to be joining us next week? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'll be here. All right. All right. Because you know, Adam's like the library. <laughs> <laughs> To the encyclopedia, man. You know, if I forget something, they are, Daddy. Go ahead and, and answer that for me, please. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to study it, though. <laughs> there you go. Hey, listen, we all have our gifts and our talents, and you know, praise God for it. You know, listen, you may not, you and Lewis may not be the most technical savvy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> what did you say, Liz? What did you say? <laughs> I said, I, I resent it, although it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were about to say, I resemble that remark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. forgot about that one. I'm offended. I just don't know what I'm offended at, but I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, look, uh, we love you guys. Um, you know, and we pray that this program was a blessing to you. 
Uh, again, don't forget to check out Addy's uh, programs in our channel and Sam's as well. Now, even though Sam, we're waiting for another Blessed Assurance uh, video, okay? I mean, we need to get that done. <laughs> I'm not putting you on the spot. Maybe. I need no to make a video no of my bad generation. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha and God bless. Maranatha. God bless.